Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to News Report. Here we are with episode number 42, the government shutdown. We haven't done a news report in, in months, Josh, and we're here to I reconvene know. to discuss about the, the glories of our American Congress. Oh, yes. Yes, we have. Oh, oh it's been so nice outside, too. So happy. <laughs> yeah, we should have done news report from outside today. I know. The portrait is government good. is not as good. I know. It's bad. It's bad in America. We're going to be playing a little bit of Dota today, guys. we got a plenty of good stuff to talk about. The shutdown is here. If you didn't know about that yet, I don't know where you've been. It's been all they've been talking about on CNN. <laughs> Colbert and uh, Jon Stewart have been having a field day trying to uh, decipher what, what's happening. And um, I, I think we'll talk about it once we get into the game a little bit. But everyone's been talking about what is the cost. And I've heard a lot of different figures. What, what number have you heard, Josh? Daily cost of, of the government shutdown. Oh, figures? I have no clue off the top of my head. I've, I, I've... 200 million a day is about the number that I've heard. But it's hard to quantify. How deep do you go? Because there's lost revenue from all the monuments that are closed. Um, and then all the additional concessions that will be sold from tourism coming in, all the stuff like the FDA uh, that can't inspect things, the kids that have cancer that can't get into their, their clinical trials. I heard about mm -hmm. $200 million a day, and I, I kind of believe that number. I heard one of the Republicans, uh, or no, one of the Democrats say $2, two billion a day, and that sounds a little high. $200 million sounds a little more plausible in my, my opinion. I still think $200 million sounds a bit high. There's a lot of per day. Federal Even though it is there. like, what is it, 800,000? 800, employees? That's a lot yeah. of people. That's a yeah. lot of lost wages alone right there, not to mention the trickle-down stuff that comes out of those jobs. Yeah, definitely the economy. I know, I know, like, the like places around, like, NASA and other government buildings, they were, like, business rely on workers going there for, like, lunch and, like, snacks and everything. Yeah. With that, all that being shut down, that, like, affects the businesses around the area, too. Right, right. That's that kind of trickle-down. And uh, looking at the effect on the stock market, I think it's no surprise to see that things have taken a downward spiral. I've got our graph here set from... Uh, September 16th until present here on October 4th, and uh, we were we were at all-time high levels, 1729 or so on uh, the S&P, the top uh, 500 most traded companies, and uh, now we're, what, what are we at today? We're at 1688, the market is open right now, so that's going to fluctuate here as we watch the graph, but yesterday was, or Tuesday I guess it was, was actually not that bad of a day, we saw a little sign of recovery and then right back down. Um, yeah, that came out of like Boehner saying that, Boehner came out yesterday and said we will not default. And so it was kind of like a little bounce in the stock market. Right. But then, like, today, it's just, like, back to the same old, same old, same old stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, uh, it, it's pretty bad. That, that's the big thing. So one of the things we want to talk about in this episode is to break down the difference between sequester, Obamacare, and the debt ceiling. And they're three very different things, but they all play a role here um, in, into the, this government shutdown that we're having. Let's queue up, Josh, while we're waiting in queue. We'll okay. get into that action. So we're going to play, what, what was the, the combo? You're, you're going to go Jakiro with one of our randoms, and I will play, uh, Timbersaw in the mid. Yeah, I'll try, right? I'll try to fill. All right. Based on, uh, what's going on. Good. You can mid awesome. carry the game. Awesome. So, um, essentially what it comes down to is right now everyone's fighting over Obamacare. And someone asked me the other day, has Obama, did Obamacare pass? If you don't know that, that's a little scary. If you're an American, especially Obamacare passed like three years ago. Right, yeah. remember that whole thing? That's what they ran on the. That was the, what the big election platform. Romney's big thing was, I'm going to get rid of Obamacare. Obama said, I'm going to make Obamacare happen. It passed. It passed through the Congress. It went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said, Hey, guess what? This is constitutional. It passed mm -hmm. all of the the legal ratifications. October first marks the beginning of the fiscal year in America. So September 30th was that last day, and that's the deadline Congress has to pass the budget for the upcoming year. And basically, the government is shut down because. Uh, the Senate and the House of Representatives, the two different parts of our Congress, can't agree on a budget. And if there's no budget, they have to uh, abide by this law that we were talking about here, this 140-year-old law, the Anti-Deficiency Act, which was passed in 1870, in 1870, which basically says if there's no budget outlining how we're going to spend our money, Congress is not allowed to spend any money. And that's why those 800,000 people are on furloughs right now. So that's the, the basic problem is that the, the two parts of Congress aren't talking to each other, and they're refusing to pass a budget. And until they do, we're now four days into the fiscal year. Um, the government, the federal government, can't spend any money. So any program, the FDA, NASA, uh, national parks, uh, anything that's that gets uh, federal grants, that kind of stuff, it's all shut down. There's nobody yeah. in the offices to even write the checks. It's it's non-essential personnel. So there are still some people working. Right. Emergencies. Like, I know they have like and, yeah. Camp um, David, I know, is being funded still and everything. And there, there are a bunch of stuff. Game too. The oh Army yeah, versus yeah. Navy is that Army what it is? Navy, that yeah. big rival game. Mm -hmm. 
So that's that's exciting. So you're right. There are still if you dial 911, there are still people that answer the phone and all that kind of stuff. So it's not a total meltdown, um, but it's pretty bad. And the thing that they're fighting over is Obamacare. Essentially, the Republicans are saying that Obamacare is unconstitutional. It's taken away our liberty. You might as well just take our guns and shove them up our asses because it's just as bad. And they refuse to pass any bill that balances the budget unless it defunds or gets rid of or begins to re repeal Obamacare. And that's that's the essential core of it. Am I, mm. am I right here? So, yeah, the Republicans were trying to look for, like, a one-year extension on some of the, like, things that go into effect, like the healthcare markets and everything that opened up, the open mm -hmm. markets. They wanted to delay that for another year. Um, I'm not sure what, like, they kind of haven't been too specific with their goals as far. I mean, they want to, like, get rid of Obamacare. Yeah. But, like, as far as doing it this time around, just the one, like, swoosh, they kind of want to, like, pick it apart piece by piece, it seems. Yeah. So... All right, well, this guy's going to take mid. Maybe I'm not going to play Timbersaw. I guess I could still play Timbersaw with Jakiro. It's not that terrible. Um, hmm. Got to think about what we're going to play here, Josh. Oh, God, somebody picked the pirate, too. We got Kunkka. Kunkka. Oh, no. I hope he's good, and he's not going to be middle. Hmm. Who's a good wombo combo hero? I, maybe I'll, I'll just play Timbersaw. I'll go with you. I'll give it a go. He's he's kind yeah, of a, it'll work. a pub stomper. He's, he's pretty broken. He does all pure damage, so he's pretty insane. Um... What? Um, so anyway, what the Republicans want is a little bit unclear, but basically all they want is to get rid of Obamacare, and their big thing... What's weird about it for me is that it's already a law that's been passed. It's, it's past the point of debate. It had to pass the House of Representatives and the Senate to make it for Obama to sign, you know, that whole two-thirds majority thing. And basically, it did... Oh, shit, I never, um, I never set up this overlay. Damn it. Um... And it did, and now the, the Republicans are basically just crying about it. And they're saying, well, this isn't fair, this law is terrible, it's going to bankrupt America. Their biggest thing is that they say that it's going to bankrupt us. And to mm -hmm. say that it isn't is just an absolute lie, is basically where um, where they're coming from here. Um, they say we just we simply can't afford it, and um, it's going to add more and more to the, the national debt, which is already out of control. Which is true, here, come bottom. Um, which is true, but I think that, come, yeah, the, the consensus was that our previous healthcare system was just complete bollocks. I, I mean, just just total and utter shit. The, the idea that uh, of, of private insurance where folks were, basically, if they didn't have insurance, what they would do is just go to emergency centers and get emergency care. And that's never a cost-effective solution to healthcare. Preventative care is always cheaper than um, emergency care. So where does that cost go? It gets passed on to those of us that actually pay for insurance. Um, so we had a pretty um, crappy system to begin with, and uh, we're going to get into this match pretty quickly here, but I wanted to just look at the, the Wikipedia page here talking about the 2013 budget. And if you look at what the total portion of the budget, this is almost a trillion dollars of our budget last year in 2013, is the Department of, Youth, of Health, uh, Health and Human Services, a.k.a. Medicaid, Medicare, um, health care portion and we see a big their total is about 950 billion close to a trillion dollars and the difference between discretionary and mandatory is mandatory is is the debt that is is money you have to pay without a choice that's like your rent it's interest you know stuff that we don't decide how much it is it's just interest from past bills discretionary is the money that the federal government hands that department and says okay you got you know 80 billion to play with decide how you want to appropriate that out to your necessary causes so most of our health care costs is, we can't even control that that 860 billion in last year's budget is a number that we have no choice over. We've already racked up all that debt. We can't just rip up those credit cards. Now, if you change this graph and look at discretionary spending, the second biggest is the Department of Defense, Overseas uh, Contingency Operations, and that has about $650 billion in discretionary and only $6 billion in mandatory. So, um, just saying, let's let's cut health care and, and take it out of the equation doesn't doesn't really work, and that seems to be what the Republicans, the, uh, what's that guy's name, Paul Ryan, He's the uh, he was the VP for Romney, right? Yeah, it's yeah. His big thing. I, I don't know. I don't know where these Republicans are getting off trying to claim that our healthcare system wasn't that bad before because it was it was pretty bad. I, I don't know that it really could have been much worse, to be frank. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things where, like, I can see where they're coming from because, like, Obamacare still has a lot of holes, and there's, like, this whole argument that, like, premiums for, like, normal healthy people are going to skyrocket because of how. You're now covering all these people that have pre-existing conditions, mm -hmm. so it like raises the cost of health insurance just in general. Mm -hmm. So to balance that off, you raise the premiums of healthy people. 
Yep. That's that's definitely true, and that's one of the things that is included in Obamacare is it basically you can't get denied with a pre-existing condition. So all those people that don't have insurance right now and actually need it will be getting health insurance. And you're right, that does get passed on to the to the rest of us. But um, I, I think there's no doubt about it that we needed some sort of a, a long-term solution. I agree. I don't think Obamacare is perfect by any means, but I think it's a step in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. And there's um, like this whole argument on like ways we can improve and everything. Like in other countries that have like social uh, health care for everyone um yep one of the big things is like medical arbitrage where like physicians and specialists and surgeons in general are making way more money than mm -hmm. um they would be in like other countries and that just skyrockets the uh the cost of medicare just for the whole population in general as well yeah well, that, that's that's true. And one of the other issues um, that, well, one of the interesting things about socialized health care, you hear a lot of the liberal, uh, liberal stuff talking about how great, you know, like Canada is with their free health care and all that stuff, um, which can be true. But in countries um, that, that have purely socialized health care, they tend to be less technologically advanced. If you have some really aggressive form of cancer or something like that, you're actually better off being in America where you can get the privatized health care that's actually a little bit better. You have access to higher quality equipment and more cutting edge technologies, whereas in the socialized systems, um, there's less incentive to, to be um, innovative so that they don't have quite that same level of technology, even though your average person has better health care. It's sort mm -hmm. of um, sort of a strange dichotomy. I feel like that's one of the things that a lot of folks overlook, where you either hear the extreme socialized healthcare is total bullshit, or um, it's you know the saving grace and Canada beats us on every front. And I, there's there's positives and negatives to both for sure. But um, I don't know. I, I don't know that I necessarily agree that healthcare is a basic right, but I, I think it definitely is something that the average person should have should have access to. But uh, I don't know. I, I still think our biggest biggest budgetary problem is defense spending more so than anything else. I mean, we still spend an absurd amount of money on on defense contracting. Mhm. Mm yeah, definitely. Um, I think that's something they need to fix, but that's like a whole nother issue. Yeah, well, that's that's for <laughs> sure. I, I mean, that's that's definitely true. So uh, basically, uh, that that's the reason the government shut down right now. The the conservatives in uh, the House of Re uh, the House of Representatives is controlled by uh, the the Republican Party right now, and the Senate is controlled by. Uh, the Democrats. So that that's kind of where the, the issue is coming in now, where the, the Democrats have been trying to pass stuff, um, at least so it seems. It, it's hard to tell the, the fact from crap and who's actually bullshitting, because honestly, I don't know how I feel about Harry Reid, man. He's kind of a slimy little bugger. He is, uh, John Banner's the Speaker of the House. Ha uh, Harry Reid is the, what, what's the, what, he's head of the Senate, but what's the word? Is he? Oh, House of uh, the, the leader of the Senate? I, I don't know what the, the appropriate title is. Yeah, for. yeah, I forget the titles off the top but of my head, too. I'm, I'm sure you saw the uh, that little clip of him when the, the ladies were like, well, why don't you just pass that one law to help those kids with cancer so that that can get funded again? And the big the thing the Democrats are doing now um, is they're not passing anything. Now the uh, Democrats are kind of stonewalling the Republicans because the Republicans stonewalled, uh, stonewalled them for so long. So now people are, are giving the Democrats shit for saying, well, now you're not compromising. But their whole point is like, well, we wouldn't have gotten here if they had been more reasonable about, um, you know, all of the stuff that, that we needed to do in the first place. So, oh, man, I'm, I'm pretty bad. Oh, Yo, that no. hero has a long auto attack range. Uh, who, Lena? Yeah. Oh, I I um, so, but th they, now what the Republicans are trying to do is nitpick, and they say, all right, well, we'll pass certain things, like the cancer treatments, we'll pass, um, uh, what, what was some of the, some of the certain memorial parks, like that whole thing with those World War II vets breaking yeah, yeah, into their own memorial. To, that's what they've been trying to do. Yeah. I know they want to, like, go for FEMA and National Guard. Yeah. Are the next couple of things they want to try to pass and everything. And right now, there's, like, what's on the table is the republic or the democrats don't want to deal with that at all yeah and it kind of it's one of those things where like if they do start negotiating then it's going to set like the precedent that like whenever exactly. the budget comes to like needs to be extended whoever controls like the house can just say no until we get our way right and that that's definitely right that's that's exactly why they're not saying passing individual things they're saying why do they get to nitpick why do they get to choose what things should be funded and, and what don't that's what this whole thing is about so both sides are completely deadlocked but it seems that it, it seems to be kind of unanimous now that the republicans were the ones that really started it i think the democrats have come off much more reasonable in this entire thing and um you know some of the republicans are starting to defect a little bit they're saying like hey you know we need to we need to get this taken care of because people are really suffering the, the people that 
uh, really have nothing to do with this are the ones out of work. Oh, Pink's coming to, to gank here. Yeah, are the ones out of work and, you know, having the the most trouble with all this. So that's, you know, right now, I guess they kind of feel like they're failing the American people a little bit, which really they, they kind of are. The, all, all sides, not just the, the Republicans. But um, we'll see. It's been how long now? Four and a half days? We're at the halfway mark of the fourth day. And yeah, it's still been since Tuesday. And doesn't, it doesn't look doesn't look yeah. good. <laughs> but yeah, I, I mean, when you look at it, the it's kind of been like a slowdown has like been like kind of key word they point out on the first day. It's like not really the end of the world. Mm -hmm. The big thing will be um, on the 17th, I think, the is when the ceiling. debt ceiling. And there's been whole that they'll actually default or if we actually, that's even the official date because of the government shutdown, they actually are spending less money. And so that it's like a whole thing where that kind of like deep, the, like the debt ceiling kind of, they thought it was going to happen earlier in the year, but then they started making more money and everything. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like a date that gets adjusted accordingly. It's not something that like set in stone by any means. Right. And oh God, the, um, and one of the, oh God, she's level six. Oh my God. I did not see that coming. Uh, and really, I guess we should define exactly what the debt ceiling is. And uh, essentially it is. Uh, the the maximum level of of debt that the United States Congress can rack up. Right now, it's like 16 trillion, something like that. Um, oh, nice, uh, something like 16 trillion. Um, and you know, eventually, if you run out of money, you only really have one more option: is to just say, all right, well, we're going to raise the debt ceiling. We're going to allow ourselves some more credit lines and uh, continue to pay our bills. Mm -hmm. So. It's, it doesn't change the budget. A lot of people get confused and say, well, we like the Republicans say, well, we don't need to spend any more money. It's not really spending more money. It's paying the obligations that we, we already said we would pay. Yeah. It doesn't ch appropriate any more money in the budget. So um, if we don't do it, that's really scary. The, I guess Boehner said today that they won't let us default, which is good news, but it's... It's scary shit, man. If we that, that's uh, definitely the bigger of the issues. That's way bigger than the shutdown, because yeah. if you default, it changes like America's never how defaulted we can, like, ever. Yeah, yeah. So we always pay our bills on time. We shut down a couple time. times. Yeah, and yeah. the big thing is like getting people to buy our debt. Then yeah, comes the really really big issue. Yeah. Um, because we need we constantly need more money as we've been seeing the debt ceiling go up and up and up over the years. Yep. And if we can't sell our debt, then we're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's definitely true. Um, but you're right, and it's one of those things. It's a scary precedent because um, that's one of the defining things about America. What makes it such a great country um, is that our debt is the most reliable in the world. Other countries model their system off of ours because we have, um, you know, we, we handle our debt so well as it uh, as it may be. Um, so if we default, you know that. It's, it's unprecedented. We don't even know exactly what would happen to the American economy and, and how bad things would get because it's, it's literally never happened. So that's the scariest part is not being able to say, all right, this is bad, but we can quantify it to say, we know it's going to be bad, but we don't really know how bad. So uh, let's just try to avoid it. Eh, that's scary. And based on how, um, how immature our, uh, our Congress has been acting, I, I think that's a, a scary bit of responsibility to put on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. It's definitely the bigger that's the bigger thing in like Wall Street's mind, too, because even like the first day after the shutdown, Wall Street actually did well. And it's all because people weren't really expecting this to last too long. And even if it did, it's not really that big of an issue. Mm -hmm. The really big issue is the debt ceiling, because that changes like treasuries and bonds and everything. They'll change interest rates. Um, this issue when they had it before, um, when they couldn't decide to extend the budget oh god yeah i got taunted by axe led to the <laughs> first downgrade and um jesus christ led to the downgrade in u.s credit so mm -hmm. it's definitely one of those things that has a very very large impact on treasuries and the bond market and everything just in general yeah so absolutely absolutely so it is uh, scary times ahead hopefully uh, our government figures out what to do next time i die or so we can try and sign up for obamacare here it is healthcare.gov so the site is live that's one of the other problems as well we talked about uh, obamacare having its kinks um but the website is basically being completely overrun there's way more demand than the site can handle and you have to wait in a queue to even be able to see the healthcare premiums um, and use the site. You basically put in your state and it says, sorry, we're overwhelmed right now. Come back later, except it said that for the past four days since it, uh, since it launched. Launched. So that's um, just, I don't know, giving the Republicans a little bit of fuel there to um, hate on Obamacare because it's kind of shitty right now. Yeah, yeah. 
I kind of, I don't know, all that stuff is like almost typical now as we see like games. In our world, we see games on the first day do terrible as far as like the servers being able to accommodate the players and everything. Yeah, well, that's true. That's definitely true. Um, so I, I guess you're right. We are a little bit used to it as as gamers, and I, I sort of can understand. I mean, a lot of those Republicans, notably, just don't understand technology. I, I mean, they they are about as clueless as it comes, um, and you know, they're they're dumb. They they don't understand that you know technology works that way, and it's hard. It's really hard to predict how many people are going to use a service and appropriating servers and all that kind of shit. I'm not surprised the brainos in Congress that claim to be financial experts that are having trouble understanding the oh God. the actions There's of like, their... Of what there are the, the not many financial experts oh in God. Congress at I know. all. It's sad. <laughs> they pretend to be. They think they are, but they're obviously clueless. I, I mean, to just it seems a lot of them don't really seem to understand the impact that this shutdown is having um, and can have to, to our economy in, in the long run. And uh, just I, I think the Republican Party are really... Um, just confused at how bad this makes them look. And I, I started wondering, is this going to be the time? I mean, America wasn't always a two-party system. There was a time where we had three parties. Is it almost time to go back to that? You think enough people will get away from this Tea Party Republican thing that just seems to be all about hate, no abortion, no gays, you know, um, you know, no compromise, all this kind of stuff. I, I think people are, are just kind of turned off by just the, the level of negativity coming out from that, that side of our government. And it makes me wonder, is this going to be the time that we finally get to see, um, you know, kind of a new party breakout that's a, a more moderate Republican, still different from the bleeding heart liberals, that takes America back to a day that isn't just based on a two-party system? Oh, that's... Is that too much? Is see, that too go too far gone? You see, like, the Tea Party are the ones trying to break off, but they're the radicals. Right. So the yeah, I'm going to break off the like, other way. Out of it would, like, be just Republicans and just be the normal Republican Party. Maybe, except, well, I think the Tea Partiers are, are starting to lose some uh, some pull, though. I think the other Republicans are starting to recognize just how how ridiculous it is to be, um, just, just the, their, their general mindset. They're, they're like anti-taxes, you know? It's... Um, it's a, unless you're rich, it's really just not a, a mindset that folks can empathize uh, empathize with. And with our shrinking middle class, um, you know, there, there's a guy. I think his name is Richard. Um, uh, let's see here. I gotta type it out. Richard reaches something. It's spelled like that. I don't know how you pronounce it. Uh, he just wrote a book called Inequality for All. I saw him on Bill Maher. I saw him on The Daily Show. And one of the things that he was talking about was the the year right before the Great Depression in 1928, and the year uh, right before the big crash. I guess 2007 is the right year. He said those were the two years in American history where. Um, the, the top 1% had the highest distribution of wealth, somewhere around like 27, 29%. And he said there's, it's, it's not a coincidence that as that money floats upward, our economy gets worse and worse until it crashes. It's happened twice now in our American history. Um, and it, it's just not good for anyone. He said this is, proves that the, the Reaganomics theory of somehow if we give tax breaks to the rich and they spend more money, it'll help the economy. And, and that is just, it's total bollocks, man. It's, it's just a load of bullshit. Yeah, that, I don't believe that at all, because what we're seeing now, I think, is just the accumulation of wealth is, like, the big thing that eventually is going to come out with um, as, like, the little sound bit, because people just have so much money, they can't even spend it. Mm -hmm. um, the rich people, they're just so much money from all their, like, investments and everything, and that money is just taxed on a lower on a lower basis than, like, normal income that you have to work for and everything. Right. Because yep. it's capital gains instead of... Um, income earned right instead of income tax yeah it's a completely different system you're, you're exactly right and it's it's just a little bit scary you know i haven't traditionally been one that's all like oh shrinking middle class this and that i mean i think there's definitely truth to it but it's becoming more and more apparent here uh, about the detriment that that has as the middle class which are the majority of our economy have less money to spend they spend less money and hence the economy just grows much more slowly it's sort of a ripple effect that comes out from having that shrinking middle class and having a higher appropriation of our funds as a country uh stacked up so america is in big trouble man I don't know, i'm about ready to flee the country i'm glad i have my passport because right now the government shut down you can't even get a passport you know shit like that oh, you can't do so i can't um, get a passport nope I, 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 I got not. mine you got it's yours good, good. Another, i think it's good for another like three years Good, good. Well, then, then you're ready, man. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to flee when the shit really hits the fan. I'm, I'm afraid. You know, Josh, maybe we could get rich here if we take all of our money and invest it in another currency and then buy it back after the American economy crashes. That, that could be a way to make some bank. Oh God. It's possible. I'm it's, not even uh, sure how. The, I haven't really looked at how it would like affect like the currency and everything. Cause that's like a whole separate <laughs> issue. Yeah. On how but, it would actually uh, would it be inflation, deflation, and then. How well, would, like, the more we extend the, the, the debt ceiling and the more money that we print, the, the weaker our currency becomes. 
So yeah, but we're going through a place where you have real low inflation. That's like a big worry of the Fed. That's why they're keeping. They want to try to encourage inflation at this point. Wait, explain. Because inflation is low at the moment, and it's not in the Fed's. The Fed wants to keep like a two to four percent inflation rate, and right now we are like kind of drifting lower, and they don't like that. That's one of the um, continuous reasons why they're continuing quantitative easing. Oh, I see. All right. Well, that that's kind of interesting. I mean, I guess it sort of makes sense. Um, but it, it's scary right now, man. I I don't know. I, America is in in rough shape. I'll be curious to see what happens in the next election. I mean, at this point, my big question is, who are the Republicans going to get um, to represent their party in uh, in twenty fourteen? Because obviously, the Democrats are going to have to find somebody new. I think Hillary Clinton is going to be a front runner for the, uh, the the Democrats. But yeah, definitely. Who are the Republicans going to get? Uh, who do they have that isn't just a, a total doucher right now? You know, they'll probably just. It'll be similar, I would think, to the last race where they just have a bunch of people. A bunch of randoms. Then, Newt Gingrich, Herman Cain, get the businessman up there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's really crazy on how, like, the whole, like, Republican process of determining candidate kind of, like, like, changes the candidate that's going to run for president. Mm-hmm. Oh like, yeah, Mitt Romney just changing what he what he how he feels about stuff depending. Yeah, because uh, like as you can see, like week. um John McCain who ran against Obama, like I thought he wasn't like that bad as far as like his ideologies and everything before he ran for president, and now afterwards he's like considered one of like the moderate Republicans, and it's like seems reasonable. But when he ran president, he was just like out there. He yeah. just went like gung ho, full Republican style. Yeah, part of the thing, the big thing I don't like about McCain is he's just a war horse. He is obsessed with ex- extending our military. He is obsessed with going into places like Syria and trying to be the, the white knight crusader around the world. And I think that's the biggest mistake America has made, um, you know, o- over the past years that we've had this out of control. Um, r- really since uh, Bush Jr., um, you know, we've just had this out of control military spending that has just destroyed, destroyed our budget and uh, our, our, our country's deficit. I mean... Um, I think before Bush, our national debt was something about $3 trillion, and then during yeah. Bush's we, we had a presidency... Surplus. We had surplus going into Bush first term. Yeah, and... Um, and then he following decided that, to do the Bush tax cuts, start wars, and oh God. our deficit increased, I think, by $4, four trillion. So he more than doubled the deficit in his presidency by himself. You know, And, and to see those interviews of that douchebag just sitting around painting taking it easy it's like dude you're like you're so dumb you don't even realize that the damage that you, you've done to this country in the long run like you you just you opened up credit cards in our children's names that that's really what he did our children will be paying off that debt i mean 13 trillion dollars is an absurd amount of money it's it's to the point that i think the average person has trouble picturing how many zeros that is in their head with a trillion mm-hmm. you know that i mean that is how many zeros is that 17 then you got your billions you got your millions you got your hundred thousands that's that's what so our national it, debt is. That's insane, dude. That is so, that is so much money. I've never like I <laughs> I can't even think of anything that I've seen. Maybe there's that many germs in my bowel, but still, I mean, that's still a huge number. I just. <laughs> oh God, are we going after this guy? Oh yeah, dude. I hit him with the chakram. Oh, it doesn't matter though. Uh, He's I was too, too far away. Fast. Oh oh, arrow. How is this? Oh. How is this? Huh? And never mind. I was gonna. Try to pick on Axe, but I think he's pretty yeah. beefy. Ooh, ooh. Invisibility rune. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. So, uh, yeah, shit is getting bad in America. I, as I posted on Facebook the other day, I'm embarrassed to be registered a Republican in New Jersey right now. I really am, man. Uh, I, 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 would, I, I could never see myself registering for either party. I <sighs> may be a Democrat, but I think I might have gone with Independent. Well, you have to... I, I, Register for a party to vote in the primaries. That's, oh, I wanted to vote for Ron primaries. Paul in the primaries. In New Jersey, you have to be registered with the party to vote. In the, it's not like that in every state, but it is in Jersey. Yeah, 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 I know. I remember hearing stuff about that. Yeah, so that's that's my big uh, my, my big reason. But uh, yeah, yeah, I really hate like being registered for either Democrat or Republican. Even I do consider myself to be liberal, but I don't like being Democrat or Republican since I think both sides have pretty... Yeah. I'm not a two-party system guy. I'm kind of on the same level. I really, um, I don't know. I, I, I'm pretty libertarian-ish, but not as hardcore as the real libertarians in, in Congress. Those guys are a little too far out there. Those are the guys that really, you know, hate government spending and they think shit's out of control. I'm, I'm not against, you know, um, you know, super government spending in, 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 like, a lot of social things. Like, socialized health care, I think, as a general rule of thumb, is, is a good idea. Obamacare, maybe not... 
maybe not exactly right, but I, I mean, those guys are totally. Yeah, it's something they need. They, to, they like, want to privatize everything. They, they need to work on like fixing it instead of just like trying to throw it away. Yeah, because it already passed. The, the opportunity for it to be totally thrown away has already expired. That happened, and they passed it. So now you can't just go back and say, "Well, we didn't really want it. My bad. You, you fucking voted for it." You know, that's what really pisses me off about this Republican attitude all of a sudden. We're like, no, this is a matter of liberty. It's like, it's a matter well, of stupidity. When, that's when Democrats had control of the House. That was, uh, the, it was like two years where a Democrats did everything. And that was kind of like the point where, um, that was Obama's first time, his first two years. And it was kind of like, kind of, he was still extremely radical um, at the time because yeah. no one thought that like he would succeed in everything. So. It's yeah. one of those things that got passed. All right, and all right. I mean, that's really that's like, true. But still, all right, fine. Happy, you you but... can't throw it in the face of those folks who say, "Well, I didn't vote for it." But still, it it passed the democratic process, right? Mm -hmm. it, again, it, it was it was put before the the uh, the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court ruled that it is constitutional, despite what uh, the Republicans. Well, I'm I'm leaving you, man. Sorry. <laughs> oh no. Um, d despite what the Republicans wanted to do, you know, they took it to the Supreme Court, and the pre Supreme Court said, "Yes, this is constitutional. This this law will not be denied based on the fact that it is unconstitutional." So that right there is a milestone for Obamacare. You know, y mm -hmm. the fact that that happened, it it's like they they just want to laugh in the face of our process. All these people that love America, we've got the greatest system. The Republicans are the first ones to throw that shit down your throat. And, and hear that this has followed that process. Hey, well, no, it's not fair. We didn't get what we wanted, so we're going to hold the government hostage. That's that's my take on it. Mm -hmm. And my other big beef with the Amer uh, the uh, Republican Party right now is there seems to be that that Romney-style kind of mentality of that, what was it, the 54% that are slackers or whatever, um, where th they just seem to have this mindset that people that are on unemployment, that are collecting food stamps, are bottom-of-the-barrel slackers that are just mooching off the system just like, ha, 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 they're going to keep sending me checks and I'm not going to have to work. Like, food stamps isn't really that great. If you're in America and you're collecting food stamps, your life probably kind of sucks. I doubt there are that many people out there collecting that kind of government welfare, thinking to themselves, man, this is really awesome. I'm going to keep being a sleazeball. But there, there's no mobility. If you're stuck in that position, being able to move out of it is extraordinarily difficult right now. There isn't enough money with our social programs for people to actually get their footing and come back out of it. You're just stuck there. So whether you want to be there or not, you have no way to get out. And since they have no mechanism for that, it gets lumped together as, well, you're just lazy, you're just a slacker, you're just a moocher, and I don't want to pay for you. Which is sort of a mindset that you can, I can get behind as a working person that doesn't, you know, gets irritated when I see how much is coming out of my paycheck in taxes. But at the same time, you know, you, you can't write all those people off as slackers because they're disabled or they can't work or, you know, whatever the circumstance is where they need food stamps. And that's one of my biggest beefs right now is just that... Um, it's just absolute bullshit, and I, I, I don't like the way they talk about that large portion of, of our uh, of our population. No, oh, yeah, I don't, I don't like that at all either. Especially with the rising calls of like education, and everything. Yep. Uh, there are like so many problems that just like tie into each other mm -hmm. that that's just true. make this giant giant problem we're having here in America right now. Yeah, and that's another thing. I know a lot. Of, I've heard a lot of people say that tend to be more conservative. That you know what? I, I'm okay with tuition rising way faster than. Um, way faster than um, um, inflation Be because you know what it, it takes the the college level back to kind of a, a an elitist type status where only certain people can get in and if you can't afford it that that's a mechanism to weed people out they say that college has become way too convoluted it's too easy anybody can get in all that kind of stuff and it's taking away from the value that a college degree should have it all goes back and it seems the Republicans really like the idea of having kind of an elitist class that upper elite of we get things that you don't because I have money and you don't yeah but the the problem is like they're giving loans and everything out um yeah, and it's based on almost your parents credit like you can only get like i think the max you can get is like twenty six thousand by yourself and then you need to be like either get it it's from a bank much. or like oh let's get this guy get it from a bank or get it from like some like shark loan or something like that yeah, that's how guy. like the max that like and even then like you almost have to have your parents co-sign because you're like at that point going out of no high school you don't history. have like a credit yeah. history and it's like where are they going to base on your pain but like the supply and demand is like admit, people just keep paying these high like amounts for college because they almost can they can get a loan for it mm -hmm. and they sign on the parents name so it kind of is like one of those supply and demand things where like if you can do, if you can get the loan, then they're going to charge you the higher amount of money. Yeah, well, that's definitely true. Oh, oh God, I'm scared. Yeah, sorry, I was trying to cast ice breath that entire time. I was hitting the wrong button. I'm, I'm running. I'm headed for the hills. Get away from me, anti-mage. Ah! 
Timber saw is ridiculous, dude. I can just timber chain like indefinitely. Yo, timber chain. Oh god! <laughs> no! No! Oh man! Bad news. Bad news. So yeah, I, I don't know. I'm I'm quickly just becoming pretty anti-Republican here. I'm not even really that liberal compared to the hardcore bleeding heart liberals out there. But compared to the, these current Republicans, man, I just I I don't buy any of their bullshit. They're just so full of it, and I can't stand the rhetoric that they use. I mean, it's like it's getting to the point of, of like just. Um, oh god, what's the word for propaganda? I was gonna say Hitler level propaganda with just like uh, I, I don't know if you've seen that epi the the recent episodes of the Daily Show when they mash them up saying just like Obamacare is against the liberty, it is taking away the rights of hardworking Americans, it is the most insidious law ever created by man. It's like most insidious, really, really. So you, you're telling me that the Jim Crow laws were were not only not as bad as or not not only on the same level as Obamacare, but actually just not quite as bad, like. The Jim Crow laws are the ones that, that had segregation, separate but equal, basically saying that it's okay for black people to be kicked out of places because they're black. Like, you're telling me that socialized healthcare is the worst thing that's ever happened to this country? You're just full of it. Just You're just throwing out American words. You're just throwing out isms. You know, just saying could, patriotic liberty, freedom, you know, tyranny. Like, it doesn't... You can say those words, but like, it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely one thing that's gotten... I, in my opinion, has gotten the Republican Party pretty far. Is They're pretty united up until, like, now we're starting to see cracks with, like, the Tea Party and everything. But for the longest time, they could, like, just take a sound bite and just pass through the entire party Yep. And, like, they were really, really good at that compared to the Democrats. Democrats are terrible at it. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. The Democrats do um, do suck at marketing. Um, yeah, but... and, like, for the longest time, like, Republicans are, like, in my opinion, they're known to be, like, bullheaded and stuff like this where they won't oh, negotiate. Like, yeah. Democrats are just starting to do it now. And you see the result when you have two bullheaded, like, parties. They just yeah. don't think it's done. Yeah, it, it kind of like, goes back to one of the things that Richard Dawkins has been complaining about. I, I saw some stuff uh, that, um, you know, one of the things he's really fighting against right now is uh, places that are trying to open up scientific debate on creationism. And he says, you know, obviously it's not a debate. Creationism is is a, a philosophy. It's a belief, but there's no scientific evidence for that to be an option. And these hardcore religious folks are saying, well, no, that's that's not fair. That's against the scientific method because you can't disprove it. That means that it's, you know, we should still talk about it like it's science. It's a theory just like yours as um, evolution is still a theory. And obviously that's not true. You can't just say anything that's untrue. Like, well, I think unicorns exist and say, well, I have a theory about it. So that means it needs to be on the same level as other scientific stuff. Just because it's a theory doesn't mean it's on the same playing field. You know, evolution's a theory, but there's a, a huge wealth of evidence supporting it. Creationism is the opposite. It's a theory with virtually no evidence supporting it, even though you can't really disprove or, or prove either. Um, so th it's sort of a similar thing here, what they're saying about Obamacare, where they, they can just make stuff up and basically say, yeah, you know, this is the worst thing ever. Th this is, you know, we should be included here. And it's like, no, you, you don't just get to say whatever you want. You don't get a voice for just the sake of having a voice. I'm coming. You're, you're only at the table if you have something to contribute, you know, and I, I feel like there's there are definitely some parallels there. Oh, God, I'm silenced. This is bad. Oh, Our God, no one's with me. <laughs> Our team is already dead. I'm the last one alive, and I'm oh. going to be, eh, I might live. He can keep me silenced forever, though. No, nope, he's got his ult again. Wow, our entire team just got killed. That was bad. Oh, um, that was not good. Yeah, so it, it's bad in America. It's all very, very bad. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do next election, man. I really don't. Oh, it'll be interesting for sure. Very interesting. But still, America's probably doing better than any other place besides Asia. Asia. Uh, kind of. I don't know. I think I think uh, Sweden's doing okay. Their Asia's currency's still looking strong. Slow down. Yeah, I don't want to live in Asia, though, man. They still kill people for doing drugs and stuff. It's pretty no, intense like over Singapore there. That's like Singapore and other places. And that's very harsh. Still laws. part of Asia. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I would, when you say like live in Asia, I would pick like a country. I wouldn't just like go around Asia and live different places. All right, name one country in Asia you'd like to live. <laughs> either Korea or Japan. I don't want to live either of those. Japan, <laughs> you really want to live in Japan right now, dude? They have nuclear waste like well, leaking by Well, they wouldn't let me live in there. First the of all. millions. That's the big thing. Is like oh. if you can't really get citizenship to those countries. Oh, I don't know why very... you'd want to, though, dude. Jap Japan is so polluted since that last tsunami with all their infrastructure that got ruined. They're literally just leaking nuclear active material, uh, uh, radioactive material into the ground, like, indefinitely, and they don't know what to do about it. They have no way to clean it up. All their shit was destroyed. That is, like, one of the last places I would want to go right now. And, I mean, Korea, I guess. South Korea is okay. I mean, I, I would live there, maybe, but it's pretty scary, dude. You're surprisingly close to the North Koreans. 
and mm -hmm. uh, I don't I don't know no my gusta. I would say Europe, but like I don't know. Definitely they're doing Europe, they're man. doing a lot worse than us. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm telling you, man, Sweden's isolated. They've got their own currency. They're not on the euro. It's good stuff. It's the place to be. Can you even get citizenship to like places yeah. like those? Dude, Scandinavia is like the easiest place in the world to get citizenship. It's way easier I thought for. I you needed like to have like a parent or something. A parent? Yeah. No. Like, are your parents need to be? Are you thinking of... about America? It's way yeah. harder to get citizen citizenship in America than it is in Scandinavia. That's like one of the biggest problems they're having in Sweden is all those Middle Eastern folks are coming over to try and flee the the tyranny of the Middle East and uh, kind of setting up communities within Sweden because it's so easy to get citizenship. You basically just have to walk in and say, "Oh hey, I don't have any bombs. I check my weapons at the door. Oh hey there." And they let you in, and they give you health care, and they give you education. You just hang out, eat meatballs, and uh, do your thing. Switzerland, yeah. So, uh, I don't know, man. Getting citizenship in that part of the world is pretty easy. Much easier than it is in America, for sure. But uh, there is that, that thing if you're... Oh, God, this is bad. Where if you're you're born there, um, obviously you you get it, like, right away. Oh, mm -hmm. No, no, I know that. Because I know I have an aunt who... Like, parent... They were thinking about moving to Norway for a pretty long time. Oh, yeah? And one of the issues were getting citizenship for um, husband and children. Really? Yeah. Because she, she has it because her parent was from Norway. Oh, uh, okay. And so she has, uh, or she had the option. I don't think she actually, I think she declined it, but she had the option to get dual citizenship. Oh, uh, okay. That would be cool. So I've always wanted citizenship I, I always in another country. I always thought that it was harder in other countries. Like, even though it was, like, kind of hard, it's, like, not that hard to get citizenship in America where you can just, like, kind of, like, live here. Right. And it's it's compared to like a lot of the countries a lot harder. Well, it, it depends Especially on the country. I'm I'm speaking about Scandinavia specifically. Sweden, Norway, and Finland are are, are I know very easily. The rest of the EU I can't speak for quite so quite so clearly. Um But um but yeah. I live yeah, in Malaysia the crime the rate the OP economy and everything. Yeah. Cause They'll tell you that between like us and Asia have the, like the strongest markets right now. Yeah, well, a Asia has strong markets. That's because they don't care about human rights, man. They they just uh, throw people in factories and um, you know Qualcomm and all that good stuff that we've heard so much about. That's a little scary, but they do have strong economies. Can't take that away from them. Mhm. Mm now Japan's been extremely strong, and they're I don't know. I think they're pretty oh. developed too. Japan. Yeah, dude, d d there's no doubt that Japan is developed. The problem is that all their shit just got obliterated from the last, uh, uh, dude, the last tsunami. I'm not even joking. Like, Google it, man. It's like, the pollution there is really bad. And the scary part is they, they don't know what to do about it. They have no plan. They have no mechanism to say, you know what, let's just deal. Oh, God, my chakra was going that whole time. Oh, God. To be man. able to actually deal with it. And that's the, the part that's, that's scary. Oh, God, he had an Aegis? All right, let's kill him again. Oh shit, I'm silenced still. Why am I silenced forever? Oh god, now I'm silenced. I gotta oh, run. God. Oh my Why god. I'm still silenced. We're gonna lose, man. This is this is bad. We were winning this game and now we're, we're gonna, gonna lose. It. What happened? I don't know. We I have an Asian on our team that doesn't speak English. I'm gonna I blame that, maybe. <laughs> oh Sorry, man. Guys. So, uh, alright, let's talk about uh, some, some light stuff here. We've got some other news. The World of Warcraft movie is upon us, folks. That's big news. Um, we don't know much about it. It's going to premiere in 2015, so still a little ways off. It is going to be done by Legendary. And the official date is uh, December 18th, 2015. So not even is it in 2015, but it's like pretty much as late as possible in the year. Uh, which is a bit of a bummer, but uh, that's pretty exciting. I, I thought we, we talked about a WoW movie a while ago that they were hinting at it, and now there's actually going to be one in the works. The big question on everyone's mind, though, is what's going to be the lore? What's going to be uh, the, the yeah, source of the movie? About? What's it going to look like? It's going to be like a full cinematic trailer, like, like a full cinematic movie now from Blizzard? Or is it going to be real like, people? I guess it's being done by Legendary, so... What I don't what what is legendary done? I don't really know them that well. They they've done I think they did Pacific Rim. They've done a bunch of stuff, but off the top of my head, I can't tell you specifically. I'm okay. Kind of so, but I mean, are they known for doing like that kind of in-game cinematic type thing, or is it gonna? Do you, what do you think? Do you think it's gonna be a real person movie, or is it gonna be a, a, a cinematic uh, kind of I mean, machinima style? I don't even know which one I prefer. I have to see it to even know which one would turn out better. Because yeah, I don't know if like true. it's gonna be like Br Blizzard cinematic quality or oh, like. No. Ooh. Oh god, I'm coming. Oh my god, I was gonna use my bloodstone and I, I failed. Jesus Christ, man, we have like no wards. We got nothing. I I didn't even think I was out that far. We had and... wards. They all. Yeah, oh I god. Some. 
This Bloodseeker is just out of control. How does this was... Bloodseeker get so strong? He's he like just like, showed up out of nowhere. He's 14 and 2. He must have been killing our teammates Who while was we he were killing, killing everybody. I don't know. I, I really don't know. I wasn't paying attention. I was busy talking about the government. Um, so, I mean, the Blizzard cinematic quality is really good. The issue with it more so is just that it's painstakingly slow. I mean, that is like top level. It's like Pixar style animation that is painstakingly slow and very expensive to do. Um, so that makes me wonder a little bit if, if they'll actually go for that. I See, I, I have mixed feelings too because at first I want to say, you know, it would be really awesome with real people with really slick effects casting spells and shit. But, you know... I, I feel like a lot of the real people movies for video games are real shitty. Like, I mean, I like the Mortal Kombat really, movies, like, but hopefully, technology jumps a whole like leap, and it turns out to be really good if they can do live action. But I have, I don't know. Yeah. I think it probably at this point it'd be almost better as a cinematic. I I agree. I I agree. If the cinematic, especially, was sort of like on par with the way the quality that Blizzard has set, um, I I agree because the the real life movies. I mean, you know the um, what, what's that other one? The uh, um, that other fighting game, uh, Street Fighter. I was gonna say Fight Streeter. <laughs> uh, Street Fighter, that one with uh, Jean Claude Van Damme and stuff. I mean, that movie is pretty ridiculous. I, I don't really oh, know God. Uh, <laughs> Fight Streeter, uh, Fight Streeter, Street Fighter lore Street that Fighter, well. Mortal Kombat. <laughs> but I mean, I know Mortal Kombat lore at least. I like Mortal Kombat, but uh, the Street Fighter, so that movie is just ridiculous. It is so ridiculous. Um, so I don't know. I, I, I have high hopes. I, I'm really more concerned about what the lore is going to be. I hope it's something cool. I really hope it's Arthas. That's my favorite lore. I want to see how they make a Nubricon look, man. So that guy's cool badass. Guy. Huh? That's sword. Oh, yeah, dude. Frostmourne. I mean, just the whole lore between, like, if they just did the Wrath of the Lich King book in a movie, I'd, I'd poo my made, pants like, in they happiness. They could make it all, like, a whole raid story. I'd be, I'd be really happy because that whole... Shit, what that, what's that place called we fight Arthas? Ice Crown? Ice Crown Citadel. Yeah, Ice Crown Citadel. That whole, like, raid zone was pretty cool. Oh, yeah, dude. Get based off the bosses. Oh, it could be awesome! Yeah, I, I mean, there's definitely a lot of potential. Um, I'm, I'm just excited for a WoW movie. It seems a little bit late in the, the WoW timeline, though. I, I mean, at this that point... Was like, that was, like, the biggest thing, since nowadays it's all about, like, shit, getting, like, the stuff out right away to make money off it. Like, they pumped out, like, the Twilight books so fast. Yeah. Um, they're doing the same thing with like hit books with like um, Fifty Shades of Grey and all these other like really hip things. They try to make the movie almost right away. <laughs> these really to, like... hip things, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, they try to like leech off the success of stuff to make right. money. No, it, it's true. They definitely do that. And um, no, that, that that's definitely right. And that's why I'm surprised because WoW is, I mean, we've seen the numbers slowly start to decline. More and more people are saying the game is becoming like more and more bland. It's I mean, true. It's, not, it's still like, They had like 10 million, like 11 million at the peak, something like that. Yeah, but still, it's um, it's pretty exciting. I'm still pumped to see a WoW movie. I'll go see it even though I don't play WoW anymore. I still love Warcraft lore. One of my favorite things to talk about. Um, and in other light news, what did we have here? I thought we had something else. Um, oh, oh, Strife. Yeah, I wanted to talk about this. Um, not because it's particularly new right now, but it's new in terms of, uh, of news report. Is that that new S2 game, Strife, their new MOBA, at uh, PAX Prime, they had actually, like, playable footage uh, of, like, breaky casting that I just saw for the first time this morning. I just, uh, I don't know if they just posted the videos, but I saw Breaky tweeting about it. Um... Oh. And it, it's kind of interesting. It's it's weird that S2 is making another MOBA, given that they have a MOBA already. But what's weirder yet for me is that it really seems to be a legit copy off of League of Legends. I mean, it doesn't seem to get more League of Legends like like than this. I mean, just just take a look at the gameplay here. The, the art style is exactly the same almost. Um, the, there's no denying the mini map is the big thing for me is they just move the mini map to the right side. They're like, well, actually, our, uh, our research shows that more people prefer it on the right side than on the left side. It's like you mean everybody that plays League of Legends instead of Dota or Han. That was the big thing that bugged me about it, honestly. I can't stand the mini map on the right side. Um, I like it on the right side. And see, see, you're one of those. those when, no, bags. when I move, it gets in my way. When I'm when I when you move across the map, it like naturally gets in your way. Yeah. Well. So I don't know. That's just how I play. All right, all right. Well, I found that it's nicer when it moves over because, like, yeah, for the longest time I played Han and Doa with you. We had it on the uh, left side. Yeah, made sense. Yeah, I mean, I I prefer the left side, but the grass is another thing that is completely the exact same way as League. You just walk into the bushes and you're stealth until someone else comes into the bushes. It seems like if you were to sit down and say, all right, let's make a MOBA that's as close to League as possible without breaching copyrights. Um, 
this is about what I think they would produce. That, that's really my, my take on it. And uh, it's, it's an odd move. It seems that S2 continue to not be innovators, but instead imitators. They take Dota and say, well, let's make Han. They see League, oh, that's great. Let's make our own. Why would you make another MOBA, though? The whole thing is, like, then you cannibalize yourself. Yeah. Like, you cannibalize sales. And that's, I, like, yeah. why, like, you don't release, like, if you're a car company, you don't release, like, two cars on the same range. You have, like, a range of different cars. It's, like, right. it doesn't make sense from, like, a business standpoint. And, well, I, I think it's kind of their way of saying Han, Han is fine. It had a good run, but it's over. We're going to put a knife in it. She's done, and we're going to move on. I mean, that's, like you said, the, it, aside from cannibalization, that's the only way that I can I can read it is they, they don't mind cannibalizing because they see Han as not a sustainable platform. And uh, once Asia, the Southeast Asian region that loves Han, move into a different MOBA, they're going to be fucked. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I still think Dota's the place to be. 450,000 people online right now, not bad pretty solid oh, i still like league of legends just because it's so simple it caters to the casual gamer yep more so than dota you're getting lazy i mean, on I, mean me, Josh. I used like to be so hardcore you used to love making people oh, crying dude, games to, that was back when i back when i was a gladiator wow See, i know i used to like live for making people days cry. are over and now now what are you gonna do how are you gonna cry uh how are you gonna make people cry in league you just you can't God, because you man, can't even I'm talk to in, them i'm stuck in gold league and league yeah. Oh my god. Well, I'm in Bronze League, so <laughs> I gave up, man. I said fuck that shit. That game, like I got too frustrated trying to do that grind, dealing with all those idiots and like I felt like I just didn't have the ability to take over games nearly as well as I do in in Dota. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I like think, solo I queuing Dota way more. To take over games in League. I found like, I felt like, like once a game got to the 30 minute mark and one of my teammates decided to be Rambo and got picked off, it was over. The other team would just win with a 5v4. There's no buyback. There's no, oh crap, let me try and do something here. And then the game, that was how like I felt like the majority of my losses ended with just one of my dipshit teammates getting called out or me being the dipshit teammate that gets called out. And then 5v4, you lose, nothing you can do to stop the push. No glyph, no buyback, nothing. One and mm. done. Fuck that, man. No, that is true. That is true. It's true. It's very true. So, all right. Do we have any last piece of news that we want to talk about here before we uh, before we cut the local? The only other thing we had was uh, oh, we can look at the Obamacare website. This is this will be fun, Josh. All right, guys. So this is it. This is it right here. Healthcare.gov. This is where you sign up for the official Obamacare. Look, you've got 180 days left to enroll if you want it. Uh, we see. Well, they got a little blog, Josh. Let's check out the Obamacare blog. <laughs> Four open enrollment, four things that you can do, ten ways to get ready for health insurance marketplace. Look, people are tweeting it. They're putting it on Facebook. Four steps in getting covered. In, uh, dude, I want to be the blogger for Obamacare. How do you get, like, is there a careers <laughs> button down here? I want to apply for this shit. This is awesome. This is awesome. So, but uh, this is the, well, you get right here. So let's say you want to apply. All right, I'm going to apply now. All right, I need some health care. I'll apply now. Oh, yep. we have a lot of visitors. Yep. So, okay, look at this. Oh, look, at it breaks it down. You make an account, you apply, you get to pick a plan, then you're good to go. So you pick your state. All right, we're in New Jersey. Let's scroll down here in New Jersey. If you live in New Jersey, you'll use this website, healthcare.gov, to apply for coverage, compare plans, and enroll. It can start as soon as January 1st. All right, cool. Let's apply. That sounds pretty good. Then you get to this page. We've got a lot of visitors on the site right now, but please stay on this page. We're working to make the experience better, and we don't want you to lose your place in line. We'll send you to the login page as soon as we can. Thank you for your patience. So basically, you leave this page open, and right now, even though there's no timer, there's no numbers, there's stuff going on behind the scenes, and you are actually in a queue right now, and uh, if you leave this page open enough, you'll eventually get through to the next point where then it will ask you for... Uh, you actually got there, Josh. What is it? Your name, your email, all that yeah, stuff? Yeah, your name, your email, your address, all that stuff. And the, I didn't go on after that, but I, I don't know. You have to see. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't need Obamacare. Let's, so. Um, oh, let's get started. You got it? I made it? it through. Yeah. Just, <laughs> oh, took, like, wow. Did you get through? No. What the hell? Okay, this, I, I, I call shenanigans on this queue. This is funny. What's it's the, very selective. What's the deal here? Oh. Like, oh, I was only in queue for about... A minute probably longer than you, so you may get it. But yeah, ask for name, last name, suffix, state you live in, email address, confirm email address. I want to have news updates sent to this email address optional. Okay, yeah. maybe I maybe I need that. Okay. All I'm, right. I'm, let me I'm see. looking at health insurance. Should I give yeah. my real email or a fake email? I remember your Skype for a long time was John Doe because you were afraid to give Skype your real name. <laughs> yeah, I never. For the longest time, that was just something 
since the AOL days that I stuck to you for the longest time. Don't use your real name. Somebody will track you down. Like, yeah, all right. I yeah, mean, people will track you down. I, I guess that's the government's. The government's possible. looking at everything, AC, nowadays. It's true. They really are. <laughs> They're looking at everything. So, but that's it, folks. That's how you sign up for Obamacare. If you're in America, you don't have health insurance. Obama's looking out for you. The the inverse O'Reilly. I'll tell you one thing that I can't stand is that Hannity guy, man. I, I can't get over that douche. He is so obnoxious. Oh, he's the absolute worst. He is the absolute worst. Oh God, I have a problem with news in general. Yeah, but, I kind of uh, stick to CNBC because even though they're news, they mainly just do like stock stocks and like bonds and everything businesses. Yeah. So it's like it turns into a semi news channel when stuff goes down, like this shutdown and everything. Right. But for the most part, it's just like they're not. They don't worry about all that stuff, craziness yeah. of Fox and their pundits and CNN and all those other news, twenty four hour news organizations. Fucking Ann Coulter, dude. That's all I have to say. So, all right, folks. I think that's it, though, for this special edition of News Report. I don't know. We may do News Report randomly. Josh has a weird shift schedule, so we can't commit to doing it on a, a specific day. But who knows? Maybe we'll have to pop in from time to time. Today just felt so special with the government shut down. How often will we get this up? opportunity josh to do an episode of news no, report hopefully while so not much is happening. often uh, hopefully not too often <laughs> i don't like our government shutting down <laughs> no me gusta Mugu uh, Mugu no me gusta we'll do one uh. when the government reopens <laughs> <laughs> government is real that could be tomorrow you never know government I is know. reopened hooray now we can just go back to work hey, one of the other I things know. i didn't like is that the republicans were saying stuff like well if they just sign it right now or whoever i might have been the democrats if they sign it right now everything will go back to work within two to three hours i'm like all right it's two in the afternoon so you're telling me that everybody that works in the monuments that are at home in their pajamas possibly drunk right now you're gonna call them and be like dude we're back possibly in drunk right you gotta come in for the last three <laughs> hours of work today for this shift like no things will resume the next day they made it seem like if they sign the bill right now things will be back and running in 10 minutes like no come on like it it, it works in days you can't it's not like we're not counting bit behind because like the big thing with like the stock market was um the unemployment rate like all that stuff is government funded yeah so like the big thing is we didn't get unemployment rate this friday yep and that the market, the market does not like that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's bad news. Bad news indeed. So, all right, folks, until the next news report. Used to be Saturdays at 9 in the morning, but now it's it's whenever. Follow the social media and you know what's going on. And uh, we'll see you guys next time.